Welcome. It is springtime and springtime is growth time. Yes. So look, we are talking today about a winning leadership mindset. Leaders love to win. They love to grow and get their teams to perform. And often it's about being in that right growth zone and that right mindset to actually move your team forward and lead them to success. So I can remember years ago, I had just gotten my performance review from my boss and it was marginal, right? My leadership, you could say competencies, skills, they were good, but the team wasn't getting results. That's a problem in a performance-based business. So about two and a half, but two weeks later, Friday afternoon, my boss shows up with his boss and that's the moment you're like, man, it's about to get real. It's about to go down. What's going on? And it was quite the interesting conversation, but what became clear is that I was under fire and my leadership was basically getting questioned and it was a matter of, was I the right person for the role? And of course, I'm pretty confident. I'm like, of course I am. You got this peg wrong. But yet in that, I was under performance pressure and it was real. Like your job, your role is on the line. And I had to reassess where was my mindset? Like where was my mindset missing? in ordering to lead my team. Something must have been missing in the way I was viewing it or perceiving it to not allow my team to get the results it needed to get. So hang around, I'm gonna finish the story, but let's get clear on what mindset is. There's so much out there on mindset, but really simple. It's your thoughts. It's the habitual pattern of thoughts you have, like the pattern of thoughts you consistently have. They're there, they're consistent. And then it's also like the framework, like how you frame in your mind relationships, situations, how you're going to handle them, like the process in your mind, how you think through how you're going to handle it, situations. It's a framework. So really those three things are kind of what mindset is. It's your thoughts, your habitual way of thinking. Some of that's good, some of that's bad, some of that gets us in problems, and some of that's great. And then also the framework on how we process things. And if we're clear on our framework, then shoot, other people are going to be clear on what we're talking about and the direction we're headed. And so, like, you know, how does it work? It's really simple, right? Our thoughts, they move our emotions, and then we move into action. And sometimes we don't move into action, which in itself is an action. So, right, if you don't do anything, that's not good as well. Or in my case, it's sometimes good that I don't do anything and just keep my mouth shut. So you have the mindset, you know, it's how it works, and then why? Like, <laughs> Our mindset and how we process things and how we think about them really helps us navigate. It's the funnel how we navigate life, relationships, leadership, challenges, situations. It's our navigation system, right? It's how we move forward. And that's really important. You know, Carol Dweck did some fantastic research years ago, worth looking up and Googling, about the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. And all the little nuances that go into people who are channeled to grow and move forward and the ones that are fixed and really get stuck and stagnant in in their leadership. So winners like to win, leaders like to lead, and people like to see great results. And the way our mind and the framework we govern our thinking makes a huge impact in that. So back to the story. I needed to shift. Like something needed to change in me and how I was approaching my team. And really what shifted was really the first fundamental, I'd say growth zone of leadership. When I say fundamental is you got to master fundamentals in leadership. Otherwise you're always going to get tripped up, stumble. You're going to come back and stick and get, get knocked out by them. And the one I didn't really grow with or really had a clear vision on at that point was power to the people. I call it. And really that's about a couple key principles and it's about your mindset and how you're locked in and how you're framing, how you're leading your people. And so a winning mindset was about ownership for me. I did not take full ownership of the team. And what I mean by that is I was in a position where I love to grow and help people and develop them. But yet I didn't take ownership of some of the negative influences that were affecting the whole team's morale and their performance. I allowed it. I kind of just continued to hope that it would change and give people too long of a leash. And I didn't fully take ownership of the impact they were having on the team, on the unit, and how that was dragging our results. And that's not a winning mindset. That's not a winning concept of a leader. So I had to change my thinking. I had to take radical ownership of the whole team, the whole situation, 
and own the results. And not only that, but I had to learn how to create ownership. And that's an important part where leaders can struggle, is how do I create ownership for a different team member on that team to get a result, to be accountable for their actions? So this was a growth opportunity for me, and I need to learn and grow on how to take ownership and create ownership. So that's what I did. Now, how did I do it, right? That's the key part. I did it through two little things. Ownership is a big brother. The sister, or let's say the baby brother is a better word, is basically em empowerment. How you learn to empower your team, the conversations you need to have is that link. So you have ownership, you have empowerment, and a winning leadership mindset is able to frame their world, frame their team on creating ownership and empowerment and this great link of strong, confrontational, you call them almost savage conversations. How to have savage conversations with people that makes ownership, that makes empowerment, that makes the team move forward. And I learned a lot about that. There's books written around savage conversations and fierce conversations. But I've learned two principles that I had to grow with that really helped move the needle. One was how to do with empathy, not just being a jerk and not coming in there and blowing people up. How to have empathy but still exhibit authority. And the mindset or the framework when you're in those conversations was so important for me to grow through. And yeah, I stumbled, I fell, I didn't get it all right. But those were two vital parts. So I call that power to the people. People have power when they take ownership and leadership and that's a winning mindset. They learn to have empower and the process of empowering others to do their role and collaborate and work together. And then the link, how to have strong, savage conversations with people to move them forward. So that's pretty cool. And that was kind of my leadership journey during that period. And it worked, right? It took me probably a year, year and a half, two years. But during that, and I was focused in my mindset in that, I created a winning team, you know, winning culture, winning atmosphere, people got promoted, people moved forward. And hey, the good news is the bosses were happy, man. Like it all worked out. So that's a story about winning leadership and what it really takes. Now, if you want to hang around, here's your bonus content. So I see a lot of this on the internet these days. It's like bonus, bonus, bonus content. So I thought I'd throw some bonus. I want to just kind of give you a snapshot if you want to hang around for the two other growth zones. I mean, the two other fundamental growth zones of leadership and how this frames your mind, how your mindset is framed in these two other growth zones so that you can be the biggest impactful leader you can be for your team. So the second one is really about the power of performance. Well, that's great. There's a lot of things that probably go through your thought process on how to get a team to perform, like how to drive them forward. But yet, if you're not clear and in your mind you don't have a framework on how to attack that as a leader, you're gonna get very scattered. And then your people are gonna say, gosh, he's in one direction today, another direction tomorrow, he's on this map, I never know what to expect of the guy, and they're gonna be confused. And in fact, you're going to be confused because you're not going to be clear on your own mindset on performance. So really, a really simple analogy I give is really that your performance is basically a wheel. And in that wheel, there's three spokes. The first spoke is the biggest one, where we avoid when we just want to get someone to get a result. We avoid the people. So understanding and growing the mindset how to take care of your people, how to grow their skill, assess their, I mean, uh, how to grow their skill, assess their will or their ability to do the job, uh, see if they're coachable. And what I mean by coachable is that doesn't mean they take feedback. Anyone can take feedback with a smile, but it's how they take what the feedback you give them and how quickly they can go create change. So this whole bucket of people and development and growth that you understand that those are the most important part that's driving your performance. And then the other mindset of that wheel, that other spoke, is really about the process you run. And being clear about the process, how simple, how people can follow through with it, understanding gaps and issues in the process, and assessing how well people are performing the process. It's another spoke of that wheel that you can frame your mindset on how to help performance of your team. And the third spoke on that wheel is all about produce, baby. Productivity, how you get people in action, how you get people to move, how you create a scoreboard. There's a couple different places you work through on the mindset, but being clear on how you want to drive that, that is impactful, that's powerful. 
So that's the second growth zone that every leader, fundamental growth zone that you need to master, that you need to spend your time in growing, because that's awesome. Dominic, I see you're on. Great shout out, baby. Appreciate you. You're doing great work too. That's fantastic. I'd love to see what you're doing down there in El Paso. So the third growth zone, one that's really pretty interesting, and it's what this generation needs. It's the power of creating a 2020 vision, a leadership platform. So we're still in bonus time, so we're going to keep rolling. So 2020 vision or clear leadership platform. It's so important as a leader to have that mindset and to funnel your thinking and your thoughts on how do I create vision for my team. All right, we're in a generation where very quickly millennials and Gen Zs are about to be as 60% of the workforce. And they value vision, purpose, collaborative approach, being coached, being connected. They value that more than sometimes how much that paycheck looks like. So if we're not managing as leaders, if we're not clear on the vision, if we don't know how to create a vision, if we don't know how to implement a vision, if we're not really good at bringing that vision to life and speaking to it, eh, we're just driving numbers. We're just driving results. People leave. They go bye-bye. See ya. They want to be attached to something bigger, and they want visionary leadership. So your growth in that zone, and I've got plenty of stories for both of failure and how I had to grow through success, and how I've seen others do the same, it's important. So you got those three growth zones. Look, it's great, but let's have a winning leadership mindset. It starts with what we started today with. Ownership, empowerment, growing those areas, and really getting good at strong, savage conversations that show empathy to the person you're talking to, but you still display authority that you are going to look out for the greater good of the team and the greater mission. It's been my experience. I've seen it again and again in leadership. You can grow. You can do it. And bonus time is over. Hey, next week, I got some great questions that came in. And it was really about, Quinn, this growth time vision. Like, what's the end result? Like, what does living your best life look like? What does it mean to really be your max potential? So I'm going to talk next week, you know, what I would call, like, the, the result. Like, what you want. Like the seven, I would say, essentials of living a growth life. Like what, what's the result of it? Like why should you care when adversity hits, challenges hit, and you're trying to grow, you're trying to navigate through it? you got to keep your end, your mind on the end. And so we're going to kind of answer those questions next week. But that's it. You have a great week. Go out, kick some donkey, as I like to say. Drive fast, drive hard, and grow quickly. All right, what time is it? It's growth time, baby. Oh, 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 oh,